Tonight, on The Good, The Bad, and The Unknown, Rue McClanahan befriends B, runs a hotel into the ground, and becomes a stripper? Roll the intro. Hello, boys and girls, I get old friend Angers City, and I'm back with another episode of The Good, The Bad, and The Unknown, where I take one entertainer and I find a work of theirs that I like, one that I don't, and one that uh, maybe not a lot of people know about. And today, we are slowly getting through the main cast of The Golden Girls at my own pace. Uh, my first episode ever, as you know, was of B. Arthur, but today we are talking about someone who was very closely connected uh, to the career of B. Arthur, and that is the wonderful Southern Belle herself, uh, Rue McClanahan. I, like most people, found out about Rue uh, first in The Golden Girls, and then you end up learning about her career backwards, but most people don't know about it at all because The Golden Girls was so huge and continues to be so huge uh, that people don't really get to see other things. She was also most notably in uh, Mama's Family, another wacky Southern character she was playing, but uh, we're going to go even further back than that uh, because my selection for The Good is a little sitcom she was in called Maud. And I know what you're thinking. Maud is uh, also a B. Arthur vehicle. B. starred in it as Maud, obviously. Democratic, uh, woman's liberation, uh, very staunch character, fighting against uh, the oppression of the world against her. Uh, it was a television show that was very successful, and it aired between 1972 and 1978, produced by Norman Lear and Bud Yorkin. And, of course, it was under that umbrella of great Norman Lear sitcoms. It was the first spinoff of All in the Family. So Maud actually appeared um, twice on All in the Family. She was Edith's cousin, uh, and she was written in one episode, and then there was immediate interest from the network uh, in B. Arthur and that character. So her second appearance actually served as a backdoor pilot uh, for Maud. Rue played Vivian Harmon, a wife of Dr. Arthur Harmon, played by Conrad Bain from Different Strokes. Really, six degrees over here, and they were uh, the next door neighbors to Maud and Walter. And Dr. Arthur was a Republican, and they were he was buddies with uh, Walter since World War II. And Arthur uh, actually introduced Walter to Maud. That's the backstory. And Maud and Vivian uh, have actually been best friends since college. Interestingly enough, Rue McClanahan also made an appearance on All in the Family years before this, but not as Vivian. Get a load of this. Rue was a last minute replacement for Doris Roberts, who of course played the mother in Everybody Loves Raymond in an episode called The Bunkers and the Swingers. Uh, when Edith answers a personal ad about couples who want to meet and she thinks it's, it's for friendship and they want to swap. Could you imagine swapping with Carol O'Connor? I would not like to go to that key party. So, um, Maud lasts uh, as is until late in the sixth season when low ratings caused them to revamp the show, moving Maud and Walter to Washington because Maud becomes a congresswoman. Uh, a lot of people forget about this. Uh, so they keep Maud and Walter and they basically write out the rest of the main cast, which, which really sucks. So even though the show isn't over, Rue's run uh, comes to an end. However, three episodes into the new format, the writing is on the wall, B's gone through some shit at home, and she decides to leave, effectively ending the show. Uh, and the reason I think this is one of uh, Rue's best works is for a couple reasons. First, this is the nucleus, if you will, uh, between the professional and personal friendship of Rue McClanahan and B. Arthur, the playing best friends, and you can see why she was such a shoe in to also be involved in The Golden Girls. Uh, when they already had B and they're trying to figure out who's there, you would assume, you know, B probably suggested her for the role, knowing that relationship they have, number one. Number two, uh, sitcoms at this time were a lot more like plays that would unfold, you know, in the living room, that kind of thing. Uh, and I think they favored stronger acting, almost like really going to the theater. So I think for certain actors, you will see their best acting. And to me, I say that about B. Arthur all the time on Maud, and I will say that about Rue McClanahan too. And the dynamic between the two is something that you should really 
uh, go back and watch because it should deepen your understanding of the relationship they have in the Golden Girls. So the good is uh, Maud, and that's life before the Golden Girls, and life after the Golden Girls is my bad because it's a little show called The Golden Palace. Uh, a lot of people forget that this one even exists because it was not that good at all. Certainly not as good as The Golden Girls. It was a spin-off to The Golden Girls, one of two spin-offs. Uh, it aired uh, from 1992 to 1993, even though they only had one season, it was 24 episodes. So like, eh, okay. So, as you may know, at the end of The Golden Girls, uh, Dorothy uh, marries Leslie Nielsen and leaves the house, and that effectively ends the show. Uh, so, to start the spinoff, Blanche, Sophia, and Rose sell the house and invest in a Miami hotel. And they're told that uh, all the staff is there. They just have to basically look after everything. Turns out they're not. There's only two staff members left. One of them is a young Don Cheadle who plays the hotel manager and is basically the straight man of the series. It is fascinating to see uh, the acting chops of Don Cheadle version in this format. And uh, the other staff member is Cheech Marin from Cheech and Chong as a chef. Interestingly enough, that uh, Latino chef character was originally written for the Golden Girls. And uh, it wasn't Cheech Marin, but that uh, similar character did appear in the first episode of The Golden Girls. There was the four women, and then they had this like, <laughs> this, like live-in chef guy. Um, but after watching it back, they realized it's way stronger with just the four of them. So they wrote the character out, but now in The Golden Palace, without B, uh, they decided to bring the chef character back, although it didn't quite, quite work. Uh, because you've seen so much of The Golden Girls, and they were getting older at the time, this format takes the load off the main cast. It uses a lot of guests coming in and out of the hotel. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, in the B. Arthur episode, uh, B. Arthur had a spinoff before the Golden Girls. Uh, it was a reboot of Faulty Towers called Amanda's Place, uh, where she also ran a hotel, which was not successful for her, so I'm pretty sure she knew this was not going to be successful either. However, the Dorothy character, played by B. Arthur, does return in a two-parter episode to check on her mother. Ooh. Uh, interestingly enough, since the Golden Girls was an NBC show, it was going to air there first. They greenlit everything. However, CBS became very, very interested uh, in taking it away since the Golden Girls were so successful, and they actually outbid NBC. So it premiered in a CBS comedy block along with Major Dad, Designing Women, and Bob, which is one of the, the final shows of Bob Newhart. Uh, of course, as you may know, uh, when the series ends, Sophia ends up going back to Shady Pines, which she burnt down in the Golden Girls. And after the Golden Palace, I guess it's been rebuilt because, as we know, it becomes the other Golden Girls spinoff called Empty Nest. Uh, though uh, the Golden Palace is the last appearances of both Blanche and Rose. Uh, when the Golden Palace ended, oddly enough, Betty White joined the cast of Bob the show that came on before them, which was just weird. But she's never hurting for work. Why is this bad? Well, uh, for the same reasons that that Maud was good, the Golden Palace is bad, uh, B. Arthur is not there. And she, I would say, is the fulcrum for these characters to balance upon. And uh, it's just weird. It would be like having Seinfeld without Seinfeld. She was really the central character. B. was the anchor in many ways. And, and without her... There's nothing to anchor the show, nor do the other three morph in any way. They're j it just feels like an episode where, like, B is in the hospital. Like, you're sitting watching the Golden Palace going in, and now when does uh, Dorothy come in? When does this happen? You're so used to seeing the four of them, and I think it also hurt the writing. Uh, B was always, Dorothy was always getting frustrated. Uh, and these characters were just weird and spinning out in their own way. And without them, there really is, look, I'll say it, Don Cheadle is no B. Arthur. And I'll stand by my decision. And if you don't believe me, watch it. Uh, so the good is Maud. The bad is the Golden Palace. And now for the unknown, and this is really unknown and really, really weird, a 1961 film called Walk the Angry Beach. Uh, it's also sometimes known as Hollywood After Dark. Uh, it's hard to find. It was a small, seedy-looking film 
Rue McClanahan plays Sandy, a girl who comes to Hollywood and falls in with sleazy producers and is forced to become a stripper. She then falls in love with a junk dealer, a guy who works at a junkyard, who gets caught up in a robbery. And uh, there's a lot of sleaze and drugs and sex, this kind of, of stripping. There is nudity. It's not very clear if it's Rue. Uh, and that's, you know, probably for the best for her career. Uh, nevertheless, she's clearly not a fan of this film because she often left it off her resume. And for good reason. Uh, unfortunately, the more famous she became, the more notorious uh, she became. If you see DVD covers or posters of it, it's Rue McClanahan. Like, that's the real selling point. It's like, the, the girl you knew. Um, it's definitely interesting to see a young Rue in this kind of role. Uh, but what, like, while it's very campy, it's somehow not campy enough to be redeeming and come around as like, this is kooky and wacky. Uh, it's marketed as risque, probably only because it has Rue in it, but it's really not. It's just kind of shitty. Uh, bizarrely, even though Rue is very young in this, uh, she has eerily similar hair to Blanche, and she's so uh, cemented in the Golden Girls role that she looks both young and old at the same time. Nevertheless, it's incredibly unpleasant and incredibly weird. And uh, the reason you don't know about it is because I don't think Rue wanted you to. Uh, so the good was Maud, the bad was the Golden Palace, and the unknown was Walk the Angry Beach. And I would urge you to continue to not know about that film. I am RJ City, and this is what I've chosen to do with my life. Guests of the RJ City Show, subscribe to his channel, follow him on social media, and buy his t-shirts at ProWrestlingTees.com slash RJ City.